Hello everyone and welcome back to Fallout Wasteland Warfare and this is uh, episode 13 of season 4. This is the finale. Uh, I'll talk more about the future of the series at the end but there may be a Halloween special that isn't canon or might be. We'll see how it goes uh, but that's something to look out for in the near future. Beyond that I don't want to really commit to anything specific and then disappoint people by taking a, a year's hiatus between seasons. So we're just going to focus on this today and if you are a channel member you will be seeing this a quite a bit earlier than previous episodes that's just my way of saying thank you so much for supporting the channel as a whole whether it's for Fallout or anything else thank you for being able to and willing to spare extra to go above and beyond that helps keep the lights on keeps this possible thank you and I hope this goes at least in some part towards you know my thank you to you for that anyway it has all come down to this we are still going to do the settlement mode stuff because it matters well, it may matter going forward, we'll see. And then we'll hear what we're doing today and we'll discuss what you can see before you. Looking forward to it. Hope you're excited to see how it ends. Let's get started. And so we are drawing two and potentially re-rolling one. I'm looking for boost cards or anything that will influence the battle we're actually about to do. Because we're going to need every little bit of help we can. So, let's see our first event. Ripcon test site. The Bright Brotherhood. Next battle, you may choose to set up your models fully before your opponent. Oh, that's one that's not relevant to solo play in this mode, so let's just draw another one. That does not count as the reroll. Experimental Chem Station. I can either sell it to gain 20, or during setup, know which model takes this in your consequence, so you can get some stats for a couple of turns, or potentially damage within orange. Uh, we'll just take the 20. Oh, well, actually, I'll probably just reroll that one, actually. I really do want to try and get some buffs for this fight. So that's our reroll used up. Crashed Vertebird. To scavenge the wreckage, test perception and then test luck plus two. You can draw an item or you might have to run. You can attempt it up to three times. Okay, well we'll have to do that now because I've used my reroll. And the other one is Daylight Robbery. A citizen is being robbed of their armor in the street up ahead. Either intervene and gain a medium Boston Bugle magazine rack in your settlement. I actually don't know what that does for the settlement. From the Grateful Scavengers or rob the raiders afterwards. You can test for one of your combat skills and oh, you could potentially gain one armor card and take one damage or gain one armor and gain some caps. I really hope we don't take the damage. I'm going to test both these. Let's test this one first. So test perception on Nate. Nate's perception I believe is a five so he passed it. If successful you then have to test luck plus two. Plus two puts him at six luck. That was two twos in a row. So if perception was successful, you draw an item. If luck is a fail, nope, it was not. So well, yeah, we'll just take the one item from the Wasteland deck. It might be something we can actually use in this fight. And over here, he has to pick what skill he's testing. I am testing what's tied to high uh, strength. So melee, seven. And that's a three. So he made it, and we're going to gain one armor card and 37 caps. So here's the Wasteland deck. I just drew from it off camera until such time as I drew a bit of armor because I wasn't sure how many were still in there. And we have gotten ourselves a Brotherhood of Steel Hood, which would give a plus one energy defense. So it's better than nothing. And as for the other random draw along with, well, the 37 caps, I'll just add on myself. But this is just a random draw. So let's go for whatever this is. It's a whipping mod for a melee weapon when used against a target who's normal physical damage or defense is one or less you get an extra black die it can only be attached to weapons that deal physical damage okay um yeah we, we can potentially use that in the future i've forgotten if the settlement has the ability i know we have the ability to mod weapon uh, range weapons because of armor or whatever trade it is the i think nate has but good enough i suppose not as great for helping today as i was hoping but hey they got something Quest 13, quest name, it ends with a quest overview. Even though the goal of Atom seemed to be launching a nuclear weapon specifically to wipe out Frank's Raider Group, they were the lesser of two evils compared to the region becoming irradiated. No hope would survive thanks to their preparations, but the area itself would be inhospitable and no sane person would ever venture through there again. That left only one choice. The children of Atom had to be stopped before it was too late. So you will have just heard what we're doing today. Stakes are super high and New Hope has to bring their A game. So we are going all out equipment wise uh, this time around. 
we're, we'll cover the specifics of Atom in the Children of Atom, although it is what we've seen thus far, and we know that those gamma guns are just absolutely deadly, so they have come prepared for that. We have two guests, technically. We have the Mechanist and his strange Securitron. They're equipped as they always are. So then the five from New Hope. We have Nate. He is going to be wearing one of the settlement's two sets of T60 power armor. He is carrying a freezing combat shotgun, a throwing spear, and Nuka Cherry. We're actually bringing heels this time. We're that serious. We have Nora. She's just got her gauze rifle because it, she was just born to shoot a gauze rifle. That's all she's got. Then we have John. He is wearing the other settlement's T60 power armor. He still has his kneecapper 44. He also has a super sledge because he wrecked face with it, so let's see him do it again. And he's brought some iguana bits, which again is a heal from our food stores. So hopefully we'll get to see him wreck everything. The power armor obviously gives them ridiculously high radiation defense, so that will hopefully be in their favor. We then have the Settler, who's usually our, our de facto sniper. Well, she's cracked out the missile launcher that we found way back, and is going to be sniping with that today, because, as I say, no holds barred, missile launcher sniper. Then, finally, we have Pennyworth. His particular setup for this one's going to be the Mr. Handy SMG, Flamer, and Buzzsaw. It's just going to be a brawl. They have to get to Adam and stop him, although we'll, I guess we'll cover the specifics in a second. I'll get them set up, and we'll be back after this brief word from my channel sponsor. This video is sponsored by Noble Knight Games. Check out the video description below for an affiliate link that will take you through to their store and it will help me out as well. Thanks. And here we are set up. We're down here in the corner. The settler is going to stay up there in a sniper's nest to use that sniping rocket launcher of hers to just fire those in and just hopefully absolutely wreck face. Again, no holds barred. They are going all out 100% try harding. So. What is the goal? Well, they have to get to Atom, and they have to kill him, and he has to die within five turns, otherwise it could be catastrophic. He is over there on the upper platform, next to the missile silo there. He is attempting to finish the final calibrations to launch one or more nuclear strikes in the area. In terms of the children of Atom, the Preacher is worshipping both him and the nuclear missiles hidden within. One of the, what are they called again, the, not preachers, disciples, that's the word, is here with a gamma gun. He is surrounded by the three basic children of Adam, two of which are equipped with gamma guns. One's got a bolt uh, action pipe pistol, and then the other disciple is actually in a bit of a sniper's nest up here. And they've got pretty good range from there, and they can fully see the direction of approach. So... We've got the numbers advantage, we might even have the, well, I was going to say the weapon advantage, the armor advantage for sure, but those gamma guns, if they actually hit flesh, are almost a guaranteed kill on a 4 health survivor or settler. So they've just got to get to Adam, and they've got to get past Adam's mutations and take him down. Will they do it? Uh, all, it all comes down to this. Let's jump into turn one and see. Both sides have seven models each, so it was just a 50-50 roll-off for who activated first, and New Hope got it, so the Strange Securitron has moved up and is then shooting just the SMG into the Preacher, because we know from previous uh, sightings of her, she gives them a very, very annoying buff. So he is just going to try and shoot into her, plus she's in the open, and this guy would have cover. So the Securitron knows who the target is, it's on fives, at long range it's just a green die on that SMG. Nine comes down to a seven, so unfortunately it is a miss. And we are just kind of going for raw damage here because we know also they don't have armor values. If we land a hit, we're doing damage. Well, the Preacher apparently took some offense to being shot in the back by a robot because she was randomly selected to activate first for the Children of Atom. By the way, Atom will activate if he's randomly selected. He will not move from where he is, however, so he will only shoot at someone if they're in, I think it's range black on a light shining in the darkness. So that's the only thing he will do, otherwise he will do nothing until he's having to defend himself. Anywho, the Preacher is firing her 44 revolver, just a bog standard one, but it's got armor brakes, which is bad for his Curatron, and it's on fives, I believe, for her, so an eight is definitely a miss. And second shot, it was... Is that the exact same roll again? I mean, it came down to a 7, but that's still a miss. Dice are already being weird. Okay, she missed twice. So I really want to do some damage. We are activating 
the settler up here and she is cracking out that missile launcher it's range black short range black black long range so it can basically hit the entire table almost you choose where it goes i believe you have to roll the individual dice for each person hit because it can hit multiple people obviously so we're going to roll the skill dice separately and we're aiming for that children of adam right there thanks to the high ground he is not in cover from her line of sight if it hits it explodes does a bit of extra damage to him in yellow radius it does a bit more to or sorry a bit less to everyone else if she fails the skill roll it doesn't necessarily mean it misses entirely it will scatter so we haven't used a missile launcher for a long time let's hope i'm doing it right anyway so the skill roll let's see oh well rolled out the box but that is a miss her skill is what a five her skill is a six so that means the test failed by one so it scatters orange which is a very tiny amount. I'm actually gonna to have to look at the orange marker. So it's gonna scatter orange from him and it's I use the, the thick arrow if it lands on the hit. So it's going towards the preacher distance orange. It's probably still gonna hit people but it's not gonna be a direct hit. So here we are orange from the intended target. So it's roughly landing there and then it's everyone in yellow. So it's just gonna it's gonna be these three here. They don't have armor so it is just straight up rolls against them. Had it directly hit, it would have done one extra damage. Otherwise, it's two plus whatever you roll on these. So that's a minimum of two damage to all of them. So that's pretty good. We'll start with the person who was the intended target. Ended up only getting caught in the AOE. So two damage. Three damage. Okay. Three damage. Uh, let's go for the Preacher next. Ooh, that's real good. So that is four damage to her. So three damage, four damage. And then the Disciple... Just the, the two. So actually, if you go this way, it's two, three, four. That's pretty good. Oh, and because of the nature of the missile launcher, forgot to say this on camera, she can't fire it more than once per turn, so that's her done. The sniper for the Children of Atom was randomly selected, aka the second disciple over here, and the only person currently in their maximum range, which is green plus black, is the Securitron. Nate was the next closest, and he's just out. So twice into the Securitron with yellow-green on fives. That is a fail with a quick action. Can she quick action anything? She can do a quick action prepare. So she'll definitely do that because she'll get a chance to shoot at someone else. The other shot is a hit for base damage. Bottle cap adds nothing. So it's just two damage into the strange Securitron who has three armor. And he blocked all the damage. I'm just going to lower the camera down so you can see that. But she will do a prepare to get another shot. I'm sending John into the free. I want him in there swinging that super sledge around and also perhaps drawing attention because he's in power armor so that's super strong against radiation. After his first yellow move that sniper will fire with that prepare at him but then he's initiating a charge and he is charging that children of Adam right there. He won't get to attack this turn that's fine. He's also going to take a green charge die bonus because I have no concerns with how much strength he's hitting for. Uh, I just want him to actually land the hit. So anyway, this is the sniper shot, so it's down to threes, and that is a crit to the first of the game. So that is two versus, I forgot to put the super armor on the table again. So he's currently three plus two, so it literally can't do any damage. But uh, as it turns out, only the super armor protected him. Although actually, I can never remember if you're only allowed to use one super armor per attack. I don't think you are, so he has one naturally because he's in power armor plus one for being a named settler. So yeah, I think that did fully block him there. And as I say, he finishes his move in here, in combat, green charge die bonus for when that's relevant. The Disciple with the Gamma Gun activated and has moved right over there and he is going to use that Gamma Gun to shoot at the Settler with the Missile Launcher. She is in cover from him, right up there to the bottom right of your screen, probably a bit blurred for cinematic purposes I assure you. And he's going to try and do her damage, taking a green bonus from the Preacher being within range because he wants to make sure the hit lands. So that basically well, potentially will mitigate the debuff from shooting at someone in cover. It's on fives normally, so it's down to threes. And that is a five that comes down to a four. So thank goodness it just misses by one. I'm going to double check that shooting into cover is minus two, not minus one. Uh, but otherwise, that's his turn. Next, I activated Nate, and I was going to just have him beeline towards Atom, but I saw an opportunity to crack out that freezing shotgun I gave him from our stores. Uh, after moving up yellow, that Disciple is just within range red, he's in the open. Short range for that freezing shotgun is two black dice, so I can't resist. We're going to try and land the hit, and with a crit you can be sure that it hit. Does the bottle cap trigger the freeze? Nope, we need a star. So that comes down by one, not that that matters, and then there was one extra damage there. So that is three damage, 
We don't need to do an armor roll because they have no armor. So that's three. He's up to five in total of his... <laughs> Ten health. This Children of Adam with the Gamma Gun ran out of cover wanting to shoot at Nora and the green marker is there just to see short range. She is just out so he's firing at long range with that Gamma Gun so just a yellow die on top of his chance to hit which I believe is 3. Certainly is not a 10 so he whiffed. Oh he was still within range blank of the Preacher that he would have had an extra die thrown in there but even if it was a green die the most it could have come down by was 2 so it still would have been a miss either way. Let's stick down here, Nora moving up, going to crack out that gauze rifle, powered up once, or primed once I should say to use the correct terminology, into that disciple. I want him eviscerated, that's the word, not eviscerated. Potentially possible. Well that's a crit so it hits, sadly didn't get anything extra, so that is just, just the three base damage. Leaving him on two health remaining, which isn't bad, it's possible to kill him this turn. The Children of Atom that's not equipped with the Gamma Gun activated, moved red, he has range black on that bolt action pipe pistol and... or pipe rifle, sorry. And Nora is his target because she is weaker than those in power armor. Black and yellow on threes. And that's a two, so it hits for one extra damage plus one armor break. So that is two damage on her now reduced two plus one armor. So only the super armor she starts with blocks that and she takes one damage. Could be worse, that wasn't so bad. I've got Pennyworth and the Mechanist left for New Hope. The Mechanist moved up and is going to shoot the Protectron's gaze at the Disciple who is wounded. Um, it's long range so it's purely a skill die roll unfortunately. But if it hits it kills him because he doesn't have armour. So might as well go for the long shot if Pennyworth has to try and finish him off. So be it. Oh, it was so close to a crit. It was so close. He's not allowed to use luck or anything to uh, redo that. But he does generate crits actually as part of his armor set, but no, sadly a miss. This is where something potentially nasty will happen because Atom activated and he is going to shoot into the combat between John and the Children of Adam who hasn't activated yet because he can only see them, they're the only person in range. Uh, where can I put this? Yeah, I'm just going to have to put it down here, so we're going to have to move down here to see the dice rolls, apologies. But He's shooting into combat, he is using his mutation to throw in an extra black die on both attacks, so potentially an insane amount of damage. And normally he'd be hitting on fives, but he's shooting into combat, so he's hitting on sevens. And he actually failed with a quick action on the first, but he's too preoccupied to use the quick action, so goes straight to the second attack. Oh, is, hang on, if I move this die... Yeah, that is stuck there, that is a crit fail. He is too distracted by what he's doing. He's basically still looking at the, uh, the console, just pointing his gun backwards and hoping for the best. Last action in the first round for New Hope. Pennyworth moved up red where you can see him. I'm going to have him try and kill that Disciple. It's a long range shot with his SMG, green plus red, so it's just an extra green die. And other than that, it's a skill roll. And as long as he hits, four comes down to a three. Two damage, that means that that Disciple is discipling somewhere else now because he is off the table. That leaves us with the Children of Atom that John engaged and he's not going to break away and he's not going to fire his Gamma Gun because it, there, there's no point against power armor, it's not going to do anything. So he's just going to improvise weapon against him twice on threes. That is a miss with an armor break. Second improvised weapon, seven comes down to five, not good enough. So that takes us to the end of round one. And at the end of round one something starts happening over by the silo, Atom is making progress. And we are looking for all the helpful events we can get, all three of them that probably exist in this deck. Bear Force 1, Vertibirds are infrequent but the Golden Bear insignia on its side so it shows that this is nothing, so that's okay. As we begin round 2, thanks to losing 1, the Children of Adam are going first and this Children of Adam has been randomly selected and is going to shoot at Nora because we can't really hurt Pennyworth with that Gamma Gun of his point blank range, it's on threes. That's an 8 that comes down by nothing, so that is a swing and a miss. Try again! Well, you got a crit that time. It's just the base damage of 2 radiation. Her radiation defense is 1. And she doesn't block it. Let me just make sure it's 2. No, sorry, it's 3. She has taken 3 radiation damage, so the 1 damage she has is going to flip, plus I'll add 2 more. So for my first activation is New Hope. I'm going with John because I want him to remind them of who he is. Thanks to that power armor, he's getting a black... Uh, extra bonus die for his strength. He's taking a green charge die bonus and that super sledge is double yellow and a blue and I think his base chance to hit is on a seven. So oh, with the power armor I think it becomes nine. So do it. I want you to destroy him. Well you're certainly hitting him. 
he doesn't have armor. So does the star do anything with the super sledge? Yep, it breaks their arm and that is a total of four damage with the three he had on him. I think that might be enough. No, they have nine. Oof, so he's up to seven damage on him and has a broken arm. Oh, he gets another hit. Oh, my, I'm like, oh, I really wish he'd killed him. He gets another swing. The other swing will probably do it, as long as it isn't a miss. It's not a miss. That's that's a ridiculous amount of damage. That's five damage. Yeah, he's dead. I forgot that John gets another shot. <laughs> he doesn't just have to swing it once. He bangs his head off and his body just goes flying. Okay, I wanted him to do another charge. He can't do that, but I'm glad he got rid of the Children of Adam. The Preacher was randomly selected for the Children of Adam and she's going to fire that 44 into John, give him a taste of his own medicine. And that is double yellow for armor break. And that is an 8, which is not good enough. She is on a 5, I believe. Yep. So, try again, lady. That's a 10. It comes down to a 9. That's even worse. Excellent. With the fight swinging my favour a little bit, I decided it was time to activate Nate and just charge him in there. Uh, he'll have to take some fire because he's the closest threat now to um, the ones who don't have gamma guns. I'm hoping his power armour can take it and still have enough left over to fight at him. So he, yeah, he's just charged in there. He'll make it up the stairs on his next turn and there's going to be a brawl. Randomly selected, the Children of Atom that Nate just ran past was like, Hey Sonny Jim, you can't just do that. And is activating and shooting at him twice. Point blank range, bolt action pipe rifle. Seven comes down to six, he whiffs. Second shot, same as the first. No, that is a hit, so it goes to two damage versus Nate's power armor though, so he's on three plus one. Come on, block it. <sighs> power armor blocks away that, or rather his super armor blocks away that. He takes one of the four damage his power armor can take before it breaks. I decided to activate Nora next, moved her up so she's primed the gauze rifle once and I'm going to have her fire into the Preacher and also put some distance between her and the last person with the gamma gun on the table who apparently has it out for her. Anyway, even if she maxes out here she can't kill them, they have too much health, but it could hurt. Not if you roll a crit fail it doesn't Nora, you've been spending too much time with Nate. Distracted as he may be, it was Atom who was randomly selected, leaving just the other Disciple to go after that. And he's shooting his gun into Nate. Full damage. First shot is a hit for ooh, three extra damage. This is real bad. That is a total of five versus his three plus one. Oh, he still had his super armor. So actually that one damage he had already would not be a thing. Whoops, so I will remove that in a second. He blocked a total of two, so he blocked that. That one damage technically shouldn't have been on him, but this super armor here is gone. So a total of two means that three damage still got through. So his power armor's got one hit left. That's not so good, although he is powerful without it. And sadly, Adam gets another shot. And it's a crit fail, which is just as well, because that would have been five damage. Oof. You know what would be funny? Firing a missile at the Preacher. So that's what we're going to do. Let's see if it hits its intended target or scatters. Because they're not grouped together anymore, so that's a crit fail. Does that mean it scatters, like, it just... 5 plus it scatters red. Okay, that's pretty far. It's scattering, it, like, it's not going to hit anyone. Uh, the directional is there, so it's going to go all the way over there and miss, sadly. Well, Nate charging in there is about to have consequences, because the last action in round 2, this Children of Adam, Disciple, shooting into him with combat rifle. So, it's yellow, black on fours on fives even worse well that's a miss so that's good do me a favor and miss again that's a six that comes down by nothing they did actually miss twice thank goodness for that so just some of my activations to go the mechanist has moved up there and is going to fire the protectron's gaze at close range into him and it is a fail with a quick action which he's just not really able to use for anything sadly Pennyworth, though, coming out of nowhere, his green charge distance meant that he could actually lock up this Disciple in combat. Probably not going to kill him fast enough, but at least keeps him tied down. So he's going to take a black charge die bonus and just try and do some damage. And he got a crit, so that is one extra damage. That is three damage through to the Disciple's ten health, was it, I think? Last activation of round two is the Strange Securitron. I moved him up. And he's going to crack out with that Gatling laser because he has nothing to fear. They have no armor, so it's just sheer damage that's needed. So he's getting to do this four times. He's getting a black die thrown in. And since there's no armor roll required, it's purely just down to him trying to get fives on this four times. So first roll is a crit. So that's two damage so far. 
Second shot is a hit, so that is three damage so far. That's another crit, so four damage so far. And then the final shot of four is also a hit. He just did five damage. See, normally those Gatling lasers, because they're one base damage against anything with an armor roll, it's like, eh, they're not that great. But against someone with no armor, that's pretty good. That's them up to nine damage of their 11 health. And at the end of the round, more progress has been made as the weapon silo opens. Let's see what event card is taking us in. You know, let's just go straight for this one. Into the next round. Radio Radio 4. Hey, hey guys, I've got a fun one for you. It might have swearing in it. In fact, it does, so I'm not going to read it out. But the next move action that any robot makes this round increases by one color. That is really good. So Pennyworth and the Securetron can move... Ooh, green without charging? Wow. Round 3 got started with this Children of Adam being randomly selected, so he's just going to try and hit with his gun in close range against Pennyworth, so he's basically on crit, so I think it's 2 or less. Well, if you roll a crit, you roll a crit. So that's 2 damage, 1 armor break, so that's 2 damage versus 1 plus 1. And he fully blocked it, but Evil Robin gets another whack. And that is a 7 that comes down to a 6 and is a whiff. Now I need to decide who to activate to be most efficient here. Alright, I've decided the best bet is to go with the Securitron. You can only fire the Gatling laser once per turn, as in like one round of shooting, I mean. Um, but that's fine. I'm going to do that on the Preacher, try and kill the Preacher, and then crack out the SMG at Atom, I think. That's that's what we're doing. This is on the assumption that one of these four shots just lands, because if it does land, and as long as it does one extra damage, well, that does neither, actually. So here's the second of the four shots. That hit, it did one extra damage, that's two damage, she's dead. So we don't need to do the rest of the rolls because they can't go to other targets as far as I'm aware. So we'll just go to second shot. Is Adam in within range green? He is not. So Adam is getting hit at long range, which means just a green die, unfortunately. Isn't that my best target? Yeah. Got to start trying to do that. Oh no, he's just going to heal when he activates. Mm. No, I will shoot at, all right, the, you can just see him. I'm gonna shoot at him. Still long range, but at least the damage will stick. That's a 10 that comes down by three, but is still a miss, Never mind. Well, there's only two other members of the Children of Atom still standing, including Atom himself, who was selected. So he's gonna try and break that power armor on Nate. Same as we've seen. Crit fail, could be an absolutely crucial crit fail, even if this next one lands a hit, just because that means he's gonna have a most of his normal health left after the power armor goes so here we go it is a hit it's one extra damage so that's two damage it's blockable two damage versus the three plus one he blocked it yes okay that means he has his power armor for one more turn it probably means i need to activate him next because he's gonna get shot at yeah so after a yellow move, Nate was at the bottom of the stairs there. A red move gave him enough, just walking up the stairs, it's not hindering him at all in power armor, that he could make a charge if you do it by an L shape. So he is into combat with Adam. Can't attack him this round, obviously, because that was both actions. And he is going to take a black charge type bonus because he is going for pure raw damage when he rolls around next round and cracks out Grognek's sword. Um, some people are probably going to shoot into the combat, even though he's there because we have to maximize damage done to Atom. So actually on that note, maybe it's better not to charge in. Have I changed my mind? We've got a missile that can fire at him. Nora can fire at him. John can move up and probably fire once. Yeah, actually, sorry, I've changed my mind. He's not charged in, so we're gonna pull him out of combat, maybe just at the top of the stairs here, so that we can still just shoot at him with impunity for the rest of this turn. Nora has moved up and she's firing that gauze rifle. She's primed it once and is going to go into Atom. He has cover from where she is, so it's harder to land the hit, but I'm hoping for good things. Here we go. That is a six that comes down to a five. She'd normally be needing, what, a seven or an eight? Um, let's see. She normally needs a seven because she's shooting into cover. It would be a five. She did actually land the hit, so that is three damage versus, I'm going to have to check his defense now. He's got threes on both. Three damage versus three armor. He doesn't block any of it and takes three. That is a fantastic start. Protecting Adam is all that matters to the Disciple who activates. So she is firing at Nate. He now has cover from her. So he's, she's hitting on threes. 
but she's trying and she might break that power armor. Let's see. Two shots. That is a nine, so that is a miss and a half. Excellent. Let's see you do it again. That's a ten. You did even worse. Fantastic, because you would have broke both his armor. Excellent. Good. There's only one activation left for the children of Adam after this, and it is this guy down here, who I kind of forgot about for a second. So, um, to stop him just firing his gamma gun at range, I activate the mechanist, charge them in. The mechanist is not a great fighter, but he's going to try with that Mr. Handy Buzzblade, taking a green charge die bonus, because he's only hitting on threes, which is not good. Oh, never mind, you could just roll a crit, that's fine too. Stars, did he do anything with the Mr. Handy Buzzblade? Uh, yes, actually. It says star, then number two, and then the damage symbol. I don't know what the number two means in this instance, so we'll just say that's one extra damage. So that is three damage, which is okay. I feel like we had that problem with just like the number two in a circle in a previous gun, but I've forgotten what it applied to, and in this case it's not a gun, it's a melee weapon, but either way, they don't have any armor, so it's damage straight through. Oh yeah, we might as well just kept rolling because he's the last activation for the round. Gamma gun in close combat means he needs crits, and that well, or or one of those. So yep, yeah, that is unfortunately a hit. Uh, I don't think the mechanist has any defense against that. He does not. So he also takes straight damage from radiation. So enjoy your oh, three radiation. There's number two. I'm going to need to look out another damage symbol. Let's see if I need to look out even more. Thankfully, he got a crit fail on the second blast with it. John moved up and he can't really see Atom from where he is currently so I'm going to have him help out Pennyworth here and just shoot into that combat and hopefully not shoot the friendly robot. So let's see if he even lands a hit. Yeah, it's definitely landing a hit. So 1 in 3 is his intended target and it was a 1. Hopefully that was on camera. So the armor break doesn't matter. Bottle caps don't break anything. Nope, it's a star. So it's just 2 damage straight through which is 5 in total. So let's just flip that. And then the second shot, oh wait no sorry he moved, so there's only the one shot. I was forgetting we still have a missile to fire, but let's just quickly do Pennyworth's two basic attacks with that Mr. Handy Buzzsaw. But sadly he only gets a yellow die, it seems surprisingly weak, but hey as long as it hits it does damage, so that's two damage. And six, is that good enough for him? I think it is. Yep, so that is a total of four damage, and nine is exactly enough to kill him. Fantastic, splat. Another one of the basic Children of Adam off the table. The last activation for the round, I really should move this, is a missile from our sniper nest up here right into Atom's back. That's the plan in a way. Let's see what happens with it. An 8 is a miss by 2. Yep, so that just means it scatters orange, so it's still going to hit him. Which way is it scattering? Scattering this way, orange. Yeah, so it's going to hit like the... It's going to hit here. Oh, it may hit Nate. Yeah, it's hitting Nate. It probably would have hit him anyway, actually. I didn't think that through at all. So, it's hitting Nate. Let's see what it's doing against Nate, first of all. Thankfully, it's just the base damage of 2 against his 3 plus 1 armor. He can block that. He did indeed block that. And against Atom... Ooh, that's good. That's 4 damage. 4 damage versus 3 armor means we're doing at least 1. He blocked 2, took 2. Excellent, so that's him up to 5 damage. At the end of round 3, the missile silo has fully unfurled itself, revealing the nuclear warheads within. And what event is taking us into the penultimate turn? Let's see, this one will do. Recruitment beacon, aka nothing. That's okay. There's only three Children of Adam left on the table, and uh, remember that Adam will be healing two when he activates. So it was lucky that this guy down here is activated. Not so lucky for the Mechanist, of course, but he's only hitting on crits, so yeah, that's a miss, even coming down to a three. Gamma Gun again in point blank range, that's a three that comes down by two. Let me just double check, they absolutely did need a one in combat. Yes, because they're normally on a 3, so with the minus applied, they would need a crit. So thankfully for the Mechanist, that is swinging a miss. Now it just comes down to kill Adam. So let's just be clear here, the smarter thing to do is for Nate to stay where he is and fire that freezing shotgun twice. That's 2 black dice, 2 base damage. Hitting on 5, so you know, his, his chance to hit is okay, it's not great. 
but the much more dramatic thing to do would be to crack out Grognak's sword and try and do the four damage that would take down Adam in close combat in a heroic charge. So that's what we're going to be doing. That might mean if this fails, he'll lose his power armor and people are going to have to shoot into combat, but hey, it's dramatic, let's try it. He is charging in, he has three damage, he's got one health left on that power armor of his. So what is he rolling? Well, with Grognak's sword, that is by default two green, is it? I've lost the card. I'm going to need to look it out. Yep, two green and a yellow. He is strength seven plus. His chance to hit is normally seven. Thanks to that power armor, it's currently ten. And he's going to take a black charge die bonus as well. So, I think that covers everything. That, this rather, is what he's rolling and he needs a 10 or less. But not just that, he needs to roll a lot of damage. Here is your moment to become a hero, Nate. Don't blow this. He didn't blow it. He got a hit as a two that comes down by four. Uh, it breaks one of his armor, so he's down to two armor and that is a total of four damage. He needs to block at least one or he's done. So now it's down to Adam on this armor die. He needs to roll, well his armor's been broken down to a two, so he needs to roll a two or a one on this. He rolled a three. It actually was as dramatic and cinematic as possible. That is four damage in total, which is how much health he has left, because he has nine and he has five damage on him. The sword just rips through his chest cavity and just sends his body sprawling down here and that is a victory for New Hope and the general area surrounding New Hope. The children of Adam have seen their god fall and scatter soon after. And that is that. They are aware of his regenerative capabilities, so they make sure to burn the body until nothing is left. Atom is no more, and his plan to nuke the entire area has been stopped. The mechanist survived, so he is going to shut down the facility and make sure nobody else can reactivate it. And that is a big win for the area. They did very well, they brought their best gear, they had to, and they had the upper hand with that power armor for sure. Could definitely have gone a different way, but that is it. So, season 4 comes to a close here. I sincerely hope you enjoyed the season as a whole. Thank you so much for watching it. and. As far as the future goes, well, I'll say hold off till the end of the video for one, but two, there might be a Halloween special that is or is not canon. If there is a video at Halloween, I will state in it. As I have done with previous seasons, uh, in about a week or so, I'll put my full notes for the season on Patreon, so if you're on there as a patron, you can see the notes I write for myself and the, the stories and whatnot, and the stuff I plot out ahead of time. If you want to try and use it as a base for your own, feel free. And I think that about covers everything I wanted to say here. So thank you again. And yeah, see you next time. Ta-ta for now. Attention citizens, nuclear strike imminent. Please exit the area at your earliest convenience. Thank you for your cooperation.